Welcome to Law in Sarasota. This program is sponsored by the Community Foundation of Sarasota and the Sarasota County Bar Association. We're also indebted to the Education Channel, which has offered us the use of its state-of-the-art studio on the campus of Suncoast Technical College. We thank them for making this program possible. When our country sends men and women into harm's way, the experience can change lives forever. Our soldiers, airmen, sailors, and Marines exposed to combat may be traumatized by horrific life-threatening events. A recent study by the VA reports that 20 veterans a day commit suicide. So we know there's a problem and that some of our ex-military will return from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan with mental as well as physical injuries. Sometimes these veterans will have trouble reintegrating into their families, jobs, and communities. This can lead to trouble with the law, alcohol and drug abuse, domestic violence, and bring out personality disorders previously unknown to the former service member. Today we're going to talk about the Veterans Treatment Court, a program in place in Sarasota and Manatee counties to offer a helping hand to those damaged by their military experience. Our guests are Alfred James, Program Director for the Drug and Treatment uh, Court for Veterans, and Chris Landon, who is the Veterans Court Services Coordinator. Welcome, Alfred, and welcome, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk about how we got into this business in the courts. Uh, can you describe the history, uh, Alfred? Yes. Um, we got into the Veterans Treatment Court kind of not by purpose, I would say, because back in 2011, we began to notice we were getting veterans into the uh, drug court. Um, but as we moved forward, we kept seeing more veterans coming into the uh, criminal justice system, so we wanted to be able to help them out. In 2015, we started a pilot program just to see how we could set it up and make it separate from the drug. It was, it was a track in the drug court, but they got more specialized services. And in 2016, uh, we started the Veterans Treatment Court as a standalone court where uh, the veterans actually receive, uh, they're actually connected with the VA, uh, local VA clinics and other veteran services. And I think that's the thing that really uh, begins to set it apart. And now this year we're trying to take it to another level by adding the mentors as a more uh, cohesive component to our drug court. And, uh, but just over the years we've noted that vets were coming in and we realized that they had different needs than the regular drug court people. So we began to want to try to treat them specifically. That's good. So how is it funded? The Veterans Treatment Court is funded through an appropriation from the state of Florida. Each court, Manatee and Sarasota, gets $150,000 per court to, to serve the veterans in those courts. So or is it just uh, the 12th Circuit? By the way, that's Sarasota, Manatee, and DeSoto counties. Uh, are there other veteran courts in other circuits? I think Florida has about 22, if I'm not mistaken, at least 20. Uh, there are other ones, uh, Pinellas County, Hillsborough County, Lee County, uh, they all have veterans treatment courts. Now for the most part, are these people who have come into the criminal justice system, been arrested, maybe bonded out or in jail? Yes, uh, in order to participate uh, in the treatment court itself, there is that, that uh, legal component that goes along with it. But just to go a little further, even if a person does not come into the program itself, we still do our best to offer help to those veterans as well by providing them with the uh, services and to contact people throughout the community that, where they can get those services even if they aren't in the program. Okay, so let's talk about the types of cases that you would see <clears throat> or the charges that the veterans would be facing. Uh, first off, who tells you which cases you can take? The state attorney is, is the person who screens all of the cases that come in. They do a legal screening. Um, quite often we do a treatment and a legal screening depending on some cases because some cases may uh, be on the cusp with the legal screening but when our treatment staff reviews it we may find some other circumstances which says that person really should be in our uh, veterans treatment court in order to get those services. Well I imagine you get your share of drug uh, offenses. Yeah we get, uh, we get drug offenses, we get uh, 
similar to, to drug court actually, uh, burglaries, uh, we get some domestics. Domestic uh, violence. Domestic violence. We get pretty much the same types of cases that we would get in a, a drug court. Things like uh, DUIs perhaps? DUIs, we, we have a couple, but DUIs normally when come in a drug court, but they will, in, in our v veterans court, we will allow those in sometimes. How about assault on a, a law enforcement officer? We have one of those in our program right now. In the, in the veterans treatment court, um, some of those service, those veterans, they're able to get some cases that may not come into our normal drug court in because, as I said, some of the, the things that are surrounding them committing these offenses, they may have post-traumatic <coughs> stress disorder. Uh, they may have some brain injury, TBI, some things of that nature. There may be some other things that happen while they are in the military that uh, affected them mentally. And so we'll allow those people in so that we can connect them to the appropriate services so that they can get the help they need. And does this work also with women as well as the men? Women and men. We, we haven't had a lot of women, but we have had some women. And um, so far we're doing pretty well with the women that we have coming into the program. So in the military, there's different levels of discharge. Uh, let's talk about those for a minute and, and how that relates to the, the ones that you'll accept in the program. I'll say up until lately, we've taken all, basically all discharges, even other than uh, honorable discharge. We had a couple of people with other than honorable. But we have, we have at the top the honorable, mm -hmm. and then we have a general. General. And then we have less than honorable. Right. And then you have. Dishonorable. Bad, yeah, dishonorable, bad conduct. But you'll uh -huh. consider any of those. We'll consider them because what we're also taking into account, we're taking into account their, their legal charges, but we also take into account what may have occurred with them while they were in the service, and sometimes that's the thing that we need. And I think to add to that, that's one of the reasons we work very closely with Bay Pines. Uh, Patrick Diggs is the Veterans Outreach uh, Coordinator over there, and he, um, anybody we send the name to, he'll review them, he can tell us exactly what happened in the military, why they got the discharge, what was going on, so then that'll help us make a better decision. Well, uh, some of the services available to, from the VA, I understand, are not uh, accessible if you don't have uh, honorable discharge or a, a, a higher level discharge. Can you still work with the ones that the VA doesn't? That's the beauty because one of the reasons we understood that when we started the Veterans Treatment Court, but even though the VA may not work with them, there's still a lot of services locally that veterans can tap into even if their discharge doesn't allow them to get treatment through the VA. Have you had cases where a person comes in with one of the lower discharges, but you're able to actually change that? Um, there have been a few. I think Chris might be able to talk a little about, that, about Chris? that. Yes, there are certain discharges they can get because times have changed in the military. Uh, for example, the don't ask, don't tell. Uh, that policy has gone away, away before they were getting a discharge for that, and now it's accepted. So different things are now allowed to be upgraded after six months of discharge. So okay. we send them to the veteran service officers to help them with that. It used to be really hard to get an upgrade in your discharge, I mean, historically, but I'm glad to see there's some relaxation in that to help the veterans here. It's time consuming, but it's also knowing the right people that can help you. Let's talk about the program in, in general, though. Um, is it forced on these people or? No, it's voluntary. Everyone who comes into the Veterans Treatment Court, um, they make that decision on their own. Um, because I would say this, there have been times when we tried to encourage some people to come in. They say no. They don't want to come in. <clears throat> you can't force them. Well, let's contrast this. Uh, Chris, I'm going to ask you uh, some questions here first before we get into it. Tell me about your military background and, and what you did. Well, originally I signed up for the military in part because I wanted to help my country and another part was the education benefits. So I ended up doing my time in service and I didn't do much with the education just here and there. You but were in the Guard for a while, right? I was National Guard and then back in 2005 I got activated for Af to deploy to Afghanistan. In our training I got injured. What so kind of unit was it? It was, I was a combat medic, so we were a medical unit, formerly known as a MASH unit for most people who would understand that. Um, but when I got injured, we got transferred around and I uh, wound up in the close base home health care, so they sent me home and I worked here locally at the Bradenton National Guard Armory for about three and a half years on active duty. So did you have personal contact with the VA yourself? 
Yes, I did. I went through the whole process and ended up getting a medical retirement. Um, so through that, you have to get evaluated through the VA. And then you got this job again. What was your title at the with the Veteran Veterans Treatment Court? I'm the Veteran Service Coordinator. All right. So that means you have contact with the Veteran Service Organizations, with the VA, and Bay Pines. That is correct. Okay. So let's contrast this to a typical case where a person who's not a veteran doesn't have offered these services. Let's talk about how they're treated in the criminal justice system first, and then we can contrast that with how the treatment court works, okay? So say a person gets arrested uh, for, a, say, a domestic a violence. Typically, they get probation at the first offense, maybe some treatment, but it's not as intense as what you're offering, is it? Well, this might be a little bit better for you Alfred know, okay. here. Uh, probation would not be as intense as, as a veteran's treatment court. Uh, because we require them to do a certain amount of groups every, every week, uh, beginning at probably three groups a week. Group and therapies with trained uh, therapists and yes, counselors. All of the um, veterans are having an assigned counselor who, who has more uh, experience and understanding with some of the things that veterans are going through. Uh, they also have individual counseling that they've got to do. And then they've got to provide uh, random urine samples throughout the week. Probation, they would probably do the random samples, but it may not be every week. It may be once a month or once, twice a month, whatever, but it wouldn't be as, as strenuous. But I think with the Veterans Treatment Court, there are other benefits that they would get working our program that they wouldn't necessarily get with probation. The guys who come in at a pretrial intervention, uh, they can come in and do the program in six months, be finished as long as they don't test positive and just keep their payments and everything up and work or enrolled in school or doing some kind of public service. Uh, as long as they do that, six months they're out, they get a dismissal of the charges as, as if they'd never gotten the charges. So they can actually have the case go away. Yes, they can. And for that those- That doesn't happen in, on violations of probation. No, it doesn't. Because once they violate it, that violation is there. But um, the beauty of it is if they are in our veterans treatment court and say they test positive for any substances, drugs, there won't be any points added to them for a violation. If they're on probation, they'll get violated for, for testing dirty, as we say, and then they'll have some points added to them. And if they continue with those kind of behaviors, uh, before you know it, they may find themselves with a very lengthy jail sentence, and that wouldn't happen with us. One of the other distinctions is that when a person's on probation and violates, typically they go straight to jail for a couple of weeks before the judge can get around to see them. Mm -hmm. Whereas in your program, if there's a relapse, and, and they say that relapse is part of recovery, right. you're a little bit more tolerant though with those in uh, the, the, the general probation office. Right, we have what we call uh, graduated sanctions in our veterans treatment court, which means that uh, the first time someone tests positive, uh, they, there probably won't be any jail sanction at all. Uh, it depends on the individual, but normally there will not be. Uh, they'll get a warning from the bench. They may have some assignment given to them by the therapist. Uh, we may step up treatment, things of that nature, make their um, drops a little more frequent than normal. Uh, but it may not be jail. But if they continue, then it doesn't mean that they'll necessarily go straight to jail. We'll probably end up giving them some public uh, community service. Uh, step it up again, more in-house sanctions. And, and bottom line, eventually that person will earn a jail sanction, but it will be a short sanction, probably one or two days and maybe a weekend at the most. I, I take it there's a limit on how tolerant you are on the yes, destructive behavior. There is a limit because um, the goal of, of the Veterans Treatment Court is actually to help those people overcome those, those issues that they have that have landed them in, in the criminal justice system. So once again, working closely with uh, Bay Pines and some of the uh, local clinics, uh, primarily Bay Pines, though we will probably seek some type of residential treatment for them if at all possible and get them residential treatment to help them get over that. Well, let me, let me ask you, Chris, when we're talking about local assistance, what is available for the veterans both in Manatee and Sarasota County? Well, it just depends on what services we're looking for. When you're talking about the VA, some people, sometimes the VA may get a bad name, but you have local VA, um, Sarasota Vet Center, 
which is for strictly for combat veterans for therapy treatment on a localized community so it's not like you have to take extreme steps to get to the VA and back it's there in your community you build camaraderie amongst those soldiers so say a person needs medications uh, mm -hmm. where would they go for example to get those medications if they're in this program? Well, if they're in this program, there's two options. Either they're enrolled in the VA and then they can go to the local, their primary care physician, and then they can get medications through that. Otherwise, we have a nurse practitioner that helps them find um, services to help them pay for their medications. All right, well, let's, let's take an example of a case and let's follow one through, uh, Chris. A person comes into your office, um, what sort of things do you talk about and what, how do you get them involved in the treatment? He's talking group counseling. What's the process for that? Well, my first part that comes involved, when I sit down with them, I have the basic needs met. So I've got a sheet of paper. It's got about eight contact cards on it. It takes care of food, housing, employment, and therapy. It's also got my contact information on it and the local veteran service officers. And after talking to them, I'm able to sit there and determine which ones that they need to see and which ones they don't really. So if I have somebody that comes in, they're homeless, well, housing is more important than the veteran service officer at that point in time. Where do you go for housing to help? You have organizations that have grant money. So, for example, you've got JFCS. Um, they've got grant money to help homeless veterans get back into housing. You've got a couple other organizations that do the exact same thing but they have different funding in different counties. You know, I see people uh, sometimes on the street holding up a sign by the interstate saying a homeless vet. Mm -hmm. And I'm always thinking, you know, there are resources to help these people if in fact they're vets and if in fact they're homeless, which they probably are. But you're saying you actually have contacts that can assist people like that. It's funny you say that. I couldn't tell you how many times I've stopped with somebody that's got one of those signs and holding it up in the air. And I'm like, do you know their services for you? <laughs> it's like, I'm not gonna put money in your thing, but what I can do is get you plugged in. So I've gotten referrals over to turning points, you know, for the immediate food that they're asking for help for. Um, they'll also help them with a bicycle sometimes. They get a one-time bicycle through that organization. When you're done with it, you can return it and you can get another one later on down the road. You've got other people that will, once they get plugged in over there, they can also, a lot of these organizations work together. So we have Goodwill and JFCS that will go to turning points. JFCS is Jewish Family and Children's Jewish Services. Services. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, so, uh, so what, what happens when you refer them for the employment? When we refer them for employment, they actually help them with job readiness skills. So maybe somebody doesn't know how to do an interview or they don't even know how to start by coming up with an application. Or even nowadays, a lot of them don't know how to use a computer to apply for a job online. So Goodwill will take them down on a need-based circumstances and figure out what their needs are and they have classes for all these different things so they help them do that and then they help them search for a job also along the way they'll help clothe them they will help them with transportation and even yesterday they took a veteran over to get a haircut because he had an interview okay that's great well let's talk about uh, some practical things that you may be able to help with let's say a veteran comes in and has lost their driver's license for um, not paying child support or for some other reason not paying uh, their fines. Uh, have you had any experience with helping veterans get their driver's license? Yes, I have. Actually, they remind me of two cases. One uh, veteran was inside of our program and we had a stand down in Manatee County. And so during the stand down... Let's court, explain <laughs> what a stand down is so they may, our audience may not be aware. Okay, the stand down was designed to help homeless and indigent veterans get services through the community and find out about these services. So they have clothing, boots, food, they have resources there available for them, haircuts. healthcare, <laughs> haircuts, nail, they even did nails and acupuncture. So a wider range of these services. But at that, separate but next to it was stand down court. Um, our judge, Judge Owens, participated in that for veterans, and what it did was this veteran lost his license due to lack of payment for child support. So what happened was he couldn't do it at that day, but he spoke with the other judge, released his license, and then set up a payment plan so he could get back to work, make $3 more an hour, and be able to pay that back a lot sooner than what he could any other way. Well, that's a valuable assistance. Uh, how about uh, a situation where, say, a veteran gets evicted? Well, we have another eviction from Goodwill, Minnesota. They were going to them because they were seeking help for employment. And so throughout that, we work heavily with Goodwill, Minnesota, 
and they approached us in talking about where we can help veterans that are not necessarily inside the program. So with that, we got with the public defender. We sent all the information that we could over there. I sat down with this gentleman and we talked about what the circumstances were and it ended up being there was a drive by and a bullet went through his front door. He had a small child, packed up the stuff, cleaned up the place and handed the keys back over to the landlord and then there was an eviction. So through that, they were able to see those circumstances and the public defender was able to approach the judge with that and vacate that eviction. And now that guy's free to go find housing in a safe environment for his family. Did you get help with the, uh, with the lawyers with that? Yes, we actually used the public defender on that particular case. Um, similar to what we would have done at the stand down, but because it was outside of the stand down, we were able to sit there and help in the exact same way. Well, we know that Larry Eager, who is our elected public defender, as well as Ed Brodsky, the state attorney, are very supportive of these programs. Yes. yes. And that's, uh, it couldn't work without their cooperation, obviously. So um, let's talk about the, um, the mentoring program that you have, um, Chris. Tell me about that. Well, the mentoring program is what makes this program so successful. I mean, there's right now about a 90% success rate for veterans treatment court nationwide. What makes that so successful? For one, we have additional treatment options for them. You're getting them, you're taking the criminal justice system, the VA, and community services. Part of those community services are mentors. So it's a fellow veteran that had an honorable discharge that's been either not in trouble or out of trouble for an extended period of time and sit there and it's a battle buddy system for anybody that was a veteran. They um, are there for support. Where do you get the volunteers for that? They, they are volunteers and that was a bumpy road trying to find <laughs> them to start with, let me tell you. But now I'm actually getting to the point to where some of them referred. I've gone to Manatee County Veterans Council meetings, Sarasota Council meetings. Um, I've gone to Sarasota Vets, SRQ Vets. I've gone to Goodwill and speaking to all these different people and all these different events, DAV now is trying to help get on board. So every single time they've got their monthly meeting, if I can speak and tell somebody about the program, you get that one or two that get excited. Well, this is a great chance also for our audience. If there's folks that are watching who are military, uh, former military service folks that would like to help, mm -hmm. they can contact you. Um, uh, we're going to ask that your phone number, what, what, what is your phone number that uh, they can call? Do you have a number that would work or do you want me to give it? Well, if you could give it, that'd be great okay. because so, off the top of my head. <laughs> this is in Manatee. It's 749-3600 and the extension is 7071. That is correct. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, any of you folks want to help out and uh, take one of these veterans and try to be an assistant to them, be the wingman or wingwoman for them, I'm sure they would appreciate it. So... Um, Let's talk about uh, successes. How's it working, uh, Alfred? Is the system w worthwhile? I think it is. Um, our veterans court numbers are fairly low in Manatee County right now. Um, and, and I think that's due to the, the fact that Manatee County only processed about 300 veterans through, the, through their criminal system last year. And only 31 were in the jail at the end of the year. So that's not a lot to pull from. But of those, of those who've uh, come through, um, I'd say about half of those who are discharged, as we call it, even if they successfully complete it's a discharge, about half of them right now are being successful. And then there are some that are being discharged medically. So the majority are actually being what I would consider successful discharges at the moment. Um, I'd like to go back to one point you made, though, about you said uh, veterans uh, prior veterans said we did have one person in the veterans court who was active duty he was a coast guard uh, uh, person uh, in st pete station in st pete and um we worked with him to get his charge dismissed so that he could remain in nice. active service and you also said it's possible for uh, folks that are not in the criminal justice system to call you for services so that phone number we gave will work for that well, uh, we don't have much, much more time, but just let me say here in conclusion that the, the Veterans Treatment Court is an example of a trauma-informed court. And there's others in our circuit, like drug court, we have a DUI court, we even have early childhood court, and we're just starting the comprehensive treatment court. Not all veterans who find themselves facing criminal charges will take advantage of the Veterans Treatment Court. But those who do will find an array of services that may improve their lives. As a country, we owe it to these men and women to help them get their lives back together. 
If you know of former service members who may benefit, or if you would like to be a volunteer mentor, please contact Chris or Alfred, and we thank you for watching. This is Lee Hayworth signing off. Thank you. For more than 36 years, the Community Foundation of Sarasota County has worked one-on-one -on -one with estate planning attorneys and their clients to make a lasting impact through philanthropy. Stable, trusted, and knowledgeable, the Community Foundation safeguards the charitable legacies of donors to ensure that they continue for years to come. Visit www.cfsarasota.org or call 955-3000 for more information.